it was part founded by Thomas freaking Edison. Not long ago, it was literally the world's biggest company. Its revenue in 2020 topped $79 billion. But General Electric is breaking up. General Electric was formed in 1898. It was one of the original 12 companies that was part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Think how much has changed in the economy over the last 125 years. That's the life of General Electric. It's not some resignation. No, the company that brings good things to life announced it's breaking up because it will be stronger that way. And it has a valuable lesson to teach us about monopolies and the free market. If you've been on social media over the past decade, you might have heard the term late stage capitalism, probably referring to a niche consumer item, surreal story, or ironic truth. It figures it would be something like this. The trope of capitalism leading to a corporation dominated dystopia seeps into pop culture too. The movie Blade Runner had humans turning into bioengineered replicants by 2019. In Cyberpunk 2077, megacorporations run the world. Idiocracy foresees a hyper-commercialized wasteland in the year 2505. It would mean that somehow they're using force to prevent other firms from entering. And that's possible, but that probably requires at least government complicity. So late stage capitalism, what we focus on is the tendency for some firms to become very large. But in fact, average firm size is actually falling. The number of employees that firms have is falling. Indeed, free market forces make that dystopia far-fetched because in business, bigger doesn't always mean better. Conglomerates generally, many of them are quite inefficient, but they produce enough profits that they can continue to survive. So if anything, we need more breaking up and more forming. It doesn't happen because government regulations have barriers to entry for small, nimble firms in many of these mature industries that conglomerates survive, frankly, longer than they should. Take Johnson & Johnson, seemingly ready to conquer the market after producing the only single-dose COVID vaccine. It broke up, too, as a way to mitigate risk. The separation will allow one branch to focus on relatively safe, established, over-the-counter health products like Band-Aids, while allowing the other to focus on the trickier process of innovating prescription drugs and medical devices. To be sure, concerns about big company consolidation are valid. My own personal opinion is conglomerates no longer work. Only six companies, for example, control practically all the mainstream media we consume. But look what happened. Free people and free markets gave rise to social media, partly as a way to share information, increase diversity, and circumvent those big six. There's an article from 2007. Now this is 2007, it's not that long ago. And uh, they were worried about this enormous intrusive monopoly that was going to control all of social media. And it was called MySpace. Diminishing trust in traditional media is not the sign of a society slipping, as you might hear in traditional media. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. It's a rebellion, and moving forward, outlets like newspapers and cable news will have to adapt or die. Anti-capitalists also love this George Orwell quote, the trouble with competitions is that somebody wins them. But Ludwig von Mises demonstrated in human action that we should not confuse combat and competition. He wrote, there is no conquest in the fact that one firm offers better or cheaper products than its competitors. Free markets don't work like the board game Monopoly, where the objectives and difficulty level are constant. Roll the dice, collect as much money as you can, buy as much property as you can, and try to bankrupt your opponent. Because as David Friedman showed in The Machinery of Freedom, and as any business owner can tell you, the difficulty not to mention administrative costs of real life business increases the bigger you grow. The executives at the top get further removed from what is actually happening on the ground. Now, natural monopolies can and do exist. Think small town grocery store. 
but if one were to raise, say, coffee prices high enough in a free market, a single coffee bean farmer would be able to sell beans profitably directly to customers for a lower cost. Anti-capitalists, of course, claim to support local small town stores. You'll hear them say that Walmart can drive those stores out of business by temporarily cutting prices on groceries. Then, with the local store out of the way, Walmart can jack its prices up. Late stage capitalism strikes again, right? Wrong. Walmart has an enormous advantage in terms of their costs because they have big economies of scale and other efficiencies in their supply chain. That means they're able to offer products at much lower prices. What there's no evidence of is that Walmart then jacks up its price. And in fact, the continuing complaint is that Walmart continues to charge lower and lower prices. Neither the United States nor Europe nor the world has a monopoly problem. There is competition in every industry and in the vast majority of industries, a ton of competition. What company has risen to dominate the global restaurant industry, for example? What company dominates the global clothing market? No, what we have is a government problem. If I'm a mature company, at some point I have a choice. I can invest in more engineers and more customer service representatives, or I can invest in lobbyists who can secure favorable tax and regulatory treatment from the government. And at some point, it becomes much more profitable for me to hire lobbyists than engineers. There is no monopoly on coffee, but instead a wide selection of brands, styles, and flavors to choose from at a wide range of quantities and prices. There are multiple reasons for that. As media conglomerates are currently finding out, constant consolidation will leave you unable to provide customers what they want at a decent price. And as Starbucks, Folgers, Maxwell House, Lavazza, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, Pete's, Seattle's Best, Intelligentsia, Green Mountain, and all the other coffee companies know, trying to wipe out competition just isn't worth it.